Squidgy Girl, and I don't know what happened. I think I must have gotten struck on the back of the neck with a snowball or something, because next thing I knew, I was stumbling around knee-deep in slush and March was almost half over. So, I've decided to do some short, easy videos to help get my paws back underneath me. Now, at random intervals, I'll get inspired to work on AUs, and the one that struck my fancy this time around was a fragmentary Mafia slash 1920s AU. I did a doodle, I colorized it, and now I'm making a video about it. Um, quick note. Most characters in the AUs I write usually keep the same personality, unless the point is that something about it them specifically change. That way it's like writing the same characters from different angles. Not everyone can be part of the Mafia, though. Otherwise, a good bit of the drama would be taken out. The protagonist of this AU is the same as in Vanilla, his name as well. In Vanilla, he's a Pokemon scientist who's convinced everything is somehow definitely probably his fault 100% of the time. In this AU, he's a police officer who's convinced everything is somehow definitely probably his fault 90% of the time. The other 10% of the time goes to his rival, Pheasant's Ribbon. This version of Will is physically and emotionally sturdier than his scientist counterpart, you know, police officer, but he still has his moments of failing to live up to his own expectations. Pheasant's Ribbon is a mysterious flamboyant jewelry thief who hides himself behind a mask and a dramatic persona. Anyone who's looked at Fusions of Pippina proper would be able to recognize him as Ribbon Man. His strategy is usually to steal gems that are important to someone high class and then sell it back, charging for both the market value and the sentimental value. Despite his penchant for the dramatics, he has the ability to practically disappear into thin air. He's not invincible, though. First of all, he is a gambling man. And secondly, there's only one person who's more adamant about hunting him down than Will. See if you can't piece together what that might imply. I had already designed Angie a while ago, but figured it was time for a little upgrade. I aged her up a few years to avoid some unsavory implications, and by giving her cropped curled hair that would have been popular at the time, she looks even more mature. Now I, unlike Hollywood, actually did some research involving what women wore back throughout history. The popular fashion at the time was loose-fitting and boxy, and by showing more leg than before, they really mean mid-calf length wasn't something to be looked down on. Now, having a shapeshifter in a crime ring would be extremely beneficial. The only problem is, no one can tell whose side she's on or what she's really after. She isn't unstable enough to be considered a loose cannon, but almost acts as if she enjoys watching rather than playing. Scourgeon as a mob boss makes more sense than you realize. In Vanilla, he's the self-proclaimed king of a group of mutant Pokemon living in Fresron City known as Blaze Clan. He takes his word very seriously and won't hesitate to get violent to get his point across. So the transition from Scourged and King of Blaze Clan to Andrew Hailstone, leader of the largest crime ring in the city, isn't a very big leap. You might think that since his human half's name was Aiden, he'd use that for his own human name, but he's Andrew for backstory reasons. It's on my DNA. He looks so much less threatening with his hair slicked down and fewer teeth in his collar, but at least he's not calling it a crown this time, so that's something. Andrew Hailstone is in charge of some pretty typical mafia business, money lending, gambling rings, etc. He also charges insurance for the civilians in his territory, but rather than send someone to beat them up, he just lets his more violent underlings do as they wish. Pay him, and he'll actually protect you not only from his own, but from the other criminals encroaching on his territory. Anyone who's worked with him and ended up arrested seemed to both fear and admire him. But if you double-cross him or don't pay your debt, well, he isn't called a scourge for nothing. Jisans isn't that important to the plot as of yet. If he was, maybe I had something more to say about him. He's purposely meant to look more disheveled and casual because he's a bit of a lowlife working for the ghost. Who's the ghost? Nobody knows, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I feel like I wanted to put Sam in a situation where his loyalty would have to outweigh his morals since I haven't gotten a chance to show off his Jesse levels of determination yet. There's only one thing that uh, seriously undermines this. He's an alcoholic living in the Prohibition era. He's not saying that a recruiter bought his loyalty with whiskey, it's just that he took to drinking right before the ban happened, and the law says it's illegal to make or sell it, not drink or own it. At least according to the five minutes of internet research I did. The problem is, he has no real reason to be in the Mafia. Money doesn't really appeal to him, so they probably pay him in Moonshine, which is based off of those Drunk Sans comics from a while ago. Was that a thing? I feel like that was a thing, right? Maybe if the Seiyu progresses, he can go through some kind of crisis of conscience and change sides or something. Everyone loves a good redemption story. Uh, side note, he's not an alcoholic in Vanilla or anything, and he has a very weak tolerance. Flaren keeps ending up as a secretary. That is a joke that won't make sense yet. He's a higher up working for the Ghost, who is almost as mysterious as his employer. The Ghost is, in fact, so mysterious that there are rumors he doesn't even exist, or that he's several people, or that he died in a citywide fire more than ten years ago. He might just be a pseudonym, but nobody knows. 
Flaren is the bookkeeper, accountant, and seemingly unwilling accomplice to the ghost. He's reclusive, good at keeping secrets, and doesn't have much in the way of a personal life. The perfect candidate for someone who's going to have access to such an important amount of information. Uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna try to upload again. Sorry about the hiatus, and sorry for another review that's gonna be underutilized. Um, anyways guys, that's gonna be it for now, so as always, leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section below, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye, people! And this universe has so much potential story behind it. Which, based off of those drunk sandwich games, <laughs> mm. sandwich, <laughs> sandwich, no.